So you have a couple of options for this. You don't have to do both, but if you're having fun, go for it. The book talks about how to build a regular polygon on paper. And to do that, they show how to use a, uh, a pencil, uh, a straight line, a straight edge like a ruler, and a, a protractor um, to measure angles. And, and GeoGebra can do those same things too. So we could do it in GeoGebra. And here I try to illustrate the, the tools I use in GeoGebra to make that happen. Um, and uh, I came up with a couple of different methods using GeoGebra's tool to build a regular polygon. And so this particular one here says use uh, one of the two methods in the book and the book shows these methods. Um, and then this is me trying to translate those methods into GeoGebra tools uh, to make a regular pentagon first and then make some other regular polygon uh, with more than five sides. So you could make a hexagon, you could make a heptagon, a, an octagon, a ninagon, a tenagon, an elevenagon, whatever you want. Uh, using uh, either method one or method two. I highly recommend reading this in the book first. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to demo this in just a sec. The other activity is to make a tessellation. And a tessellation is like tiling your floor. Um, a regular tessellation means there's just one shape used to make the tessellation. Um, and then there are tons of other kinds of uh, uh, tessellations. Uh, the book mentions a semi-regular tessellation, and I link out to a, um, a Wikipedia page that talks a little bit more about other kinds of tess uh, tessellations. And tessellation just means tiling. So take some polygon or polygons and tile your floor with them so they match up perfectly and they don't, you know, skip any spaces. Uh, a regular tiling or a regular tessellation means you're using a single shape over and over again. And so quadrilaterals are really good at that. Triangles are really good at that. And um, regular hexagons are really good at that. A semi-regular, uh, I believe, is where you have two different shapes that you use to make uh, a tessellation. And then there's all these other weird tessellations that uh, aren't uh, regular or semi-regular. They're just these wild patterns people make. And there's tons of different ways to categorize them. I've never studied that before, but it is a whole area in math that people get PhDs in. Um, and, and they do have practical applications out there in the world in terms of building stuff. And there's just a ton of different examples out here. So if you wanna try and make something like this uh, either in GeoGebra or on paper or with the pattern blocks, go for it. Um, I was recommending the pattern blocks because they're a bunch of pre-built shapes. Uh, and so you could kind of play around. Uh, but some of these you couldn't make because there isn't a 12 gone in, uh, in the pattern blocks. Uh, but there's just a lot of cool stuff. Look at that one right there. Isn't that beautiful? The way they kind of oddly that square moves around the screen. And then they break it down into the shape here. So this is interesting. This is a what? A one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, it's a seven gone. Nice. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a seven gone. Cool. I have all these other ones here. So feel free to look around this page, but you don't need to spend too much time studying it. I just want you to play. I want you to have some fun, make something pretty. And, and our goal is one of the following. Either take the procedure, method one or method two from the book and make a regular pentagon and a regular other gone, like a hexagon, octagon uh, in GeoGebra or on paper. Paper's fine too. Um, if you do it on paper, you're gonna need a protractor. So if you don't have a protractor, you would have to get one or borrow one or just give up and go to GeoGebra. Um, or play around with uh, tiling. Um, and, and this is important about the idea of a tile or a tessellation. Page to note, oops, yeah, that's what I want. So the idea of a tessellation. Tessellation, there we go. Which 
is just another word for tiling, is it, it needs to cover in, in every direction. So cover a plane in all directions. Theoretically, it, it never ends. It just completely fills the plane for an ever, ever and ever. Um, but just imagine you start in the middle of your room with some tiling pattern, and then you just keep that tiling pattern moving out toward the walls till you hit the walls. Um, and that's kind of a similar idea. So it's like tiling a room with a, with a regular, with a, with a pattern. I'm going to play a little with tessellations first, um, and then we'll take a look at uh, some of the GeoGebra tools for the regular, and then you can decide which you want to do. So I'm going to head over to, um, I think I'm going to use the Math Learning Center one. That's more, enjoyed that one more lately. And again, that uh, the book and that Wikipedia site show that you could make a pattern with hexagons that will fill up a floor, no problem. And so in uh, my previous house, I redid the bathroom and the shower, and I tiled the shower floor with hexagons, and I used uh, three different colors to make patterns within it. And, and you can do that here too. You could decide, like, I'm going to change some colors here and make just some of them a different color. Um, so I could, with hexagons, have fun with altering the color in their pattern in some also regular way. It's still a regular tiling. I mean, you're just playing with colors. And so if I start a color pattern, can I figure out how to continue it in some way that makes sense? Um, when I did my shower one, I actually made like an octopus out of, because they were little. They were only like... Uh, think about an inch in diameter. So it was about an inch across the tiles I used. They're relatively small. So the, there were a lot of them. It took a while. Uh, so I think if I were going to continue so this. So crazy question. If, yeah. If we do the tessellation with the shapes in this app, um, how do we share it with you to get you? Yeah, so, so if you if you do it um, in uh, Math Learning Center, there's this share button down there. And we, I think we used this back in, in uh, 211, 212. Yeah, uh, so I then, always did mine by hand. Yeah, and if you do them by hand, just take a picture and send me the picture. That's fine too. Um, yeah, so if you do it on a piece of paper with, with colored pens or pencils or just drawing, then just take a picture and upload the picture for me. If you do it in the Math Learning Center, you can just copy the link. And like, I can just throw this in the chat right now. And you would get uh, this version right here. Now the thing about the Math Learning Center sharing link, it's different than a Google sharing link. Like with, if I share a Google Doc or a Google Sheet with you uh, and I send you the link right now, but then an hour later I change it and you look at it after that, you'll see my changes. This right here, the link is to this version. Once I go and do something different, you don't see that. Um, so once I start editing some more, if I, if I ask, this to share it again, it's going to give me a different link, different code. So it's so that's just something to keep in mind. So if you do do the Math Learning Center sharing, um, the share is the last thing you did on the screen. If you do something after that, I won't see it. You would have to get a new link and share that with me. Thank you. Yep. And again, there's tons of different you know things you can try and make by just playing around and seeing what happens. Um, so my hope is you would just kind of experiment and see what can I do? Is this possible to continue? I don't know. Let's see. Um, and with kids in the classroom, we would have actually the real toys. So I just want to remind you about those real toys, which unfortunately I wish I could send you guys all a big box of them. Um, let's see, I have to change the view. All right. And the real ones are just kind of easier to play with and change your mind when you're messing around with them. So a kid can just kind of have a lot of fun playing around, trying to make a tiling and see if they can continue it. Like, can they continue that pattern right there in some way? And it turns out, 
you can't make any old polygon. So this right here, this combination of polygons is a new polygon. If I trace around it, say starting here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. It's a nanagon, nonagon. Um, not all shapes tessellate. Uh, and so that's, that's an important thing to know uh, in geometry. So this is unlikely to be a pattern I can just pick up and, and reuse over and over again and cover the floor completely without any gaps or holes. Uh, that's probably not going to work. Let's go back here. Let's see there. So, so, so this was meant to experiment, have a little fun, play around. Um, so I'm wondering how would I continue this? Would I be able to do my whole floor? I got to figure out a way to fill these gaps right here. I can't just leave them. So this is an experiment that I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Uh, and then I would just keep playing. So it could be you try to make a tessellation and it turns out ah, it's not going to work. Um, but you may find a way for it to work. There are some tessellations that radiate out from a center uh, in, a, in a pattern flower-like, but they don't really repeat like some of those other patterns I showed uh, before. So um, there's just lots of things that can happen. Um, people make interesting tessellations by altering uh, shapes that do tessellate. So I'll just give an example of that and then I'll, I'm gonna move on to that uh, GeoGebra problem. So let's suppose I start off with a uh, rectangle square type object. It's going to be roughly square. I didn't count, but it looks about right. Now, to, to make something different happen here, I just make modifications that kind of match. So, for example, if I wanted to say bump out this side in some kind of funky way, maybe that, then to compensate on the other side, I would just do the negative effect on this side. So I'm just going to try and make a copy of just those. So I could build a shape that tessellates, but just adding and subtracting in special ways. So now this is my new shape. And this will sh uh, tessellate because I've made kind of a, a lock and a key type thing. So if I made a copy of this, I could just pick it up and put it on the other side. And you can go around and do that on other sides. So like maybe on this side, I want to do something funky like even have curvy type things. And as long as I did the negative effect on this side, ooh, that's not going to work because of that pointy part there. Darn it. Um, okay, I know what I can do. I could just, let's start here. And this isn't a very good looking tile, but this would work to make a figure that will tessellate. making kind of like lock and key things on each side. This is a messed up figure that would tessellate because of the way I did it left, right, top, and bottom. So you can make shapes that will tessellate just by positive and negative space, which is kind of neat. All right, so tessellations, tiling your floor with some interesting pattern. So my recommendation, let's go back and look, see what I actually wrote. Um, so I said, make a tessellation with a quadrilateral that is not a rectangle. Um, so there's lots of different quadrilater quadrilaterals you could make on paper or build in the math learning center. Um, and then a semi-regular tessellation is where you use a couple of shapes. And, and I, I left that Wikipedia site as a, a spot for inspiration to try and do something. And you can either draw these on paper, um, colorize them, or try to use the math learning center tools. Again, the Math Learning Center tools are nice because they fit together good. Um, they're somewhat limiting, but there's still a lot of possibility of stuff you can do there. All right, so let's play a little bit with uh, GeoGebra next.